Hello, my dear students. Welcome on this session. This session is mainly about schizophrenia, psychotic disorders, schizophrenia and delusional disorders. These are two important psychotic disorders and we are going to start with schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is often called split mind. Eugene Bleuler, a Swiss scientist in early 20th century, gave this particular word, word to describe schizophrenia. Split mind. Please mind well. It's not split personality. It's split mind. That's the emotions and the drives are disconnected from the thought. The thought is something else. The emotion and the drive is something else. So it's not split personality. It's split mind. Psychosis is one important manifestation of schizophrenia. That's there is impaired understanding of the reality. Number two, there is a thought disorder. The disorder of the form of thought, the content of the thought and the process of the thought. The third one is there is altered perception and it leads to hallucinations or delusions. The next one is there may be aggression, violence and irrational behavior. And there also may be a blunted effect, social withdrawal and personal neglect. So there are some important issues in schizophrenia. The common findings associated with schizophrenia is there is genetic predisposition and the concordance rate is 50% in the monozygotic twins. It's commonly seen if the, if the mother has suffered from a viral infection and in the patients with lower socioeconomic status, that is the homeless individuals. As far as the anatomy is concerned, there is enlarged lateral and third ventricles and there is very typical cerebral symmetry which is rare to see. There is decreased volume of the hippocampus, amygdala, the parahippocampal gyrus and there is decreased glucose use found in the prefrontal cortex. If you go to the EEG findings, there is decreased alpha, increased theta and delta waves and there is epileptic form activity. And as far as the biochemistry is concerned, there is increased levels of amines, that is dopamine and 5-hydroxytryptamine. The characteristics of schizophrenia include psychosis, you must have the report of at least one episode of psychosis, then there should be persistent disturbance of thought, behavior, appearance, speech and affect, there is impaired occupational and social functioning and all this should be lasting for at least six months, then you label this patient as schizophrenia. There is no clouding of consciousness which happens in delirium and which happens in substance abuse disorders. There is intact memory capacity and orientation to person place time per se is normal. Because there is lost ground reality, you might feel that the orientation to the person place and time is lost. But per se orientation to the person place and time is not lost in schizophrenia. Schizophrenia can be called as having positive symptoms and negative symptoms. What is positive? Positive is excessive, is additional to the expected behavior and the patient gets delusions, hallucinations, agitation, aggression, increased talkativeness. The patient may also have negative symptoms and it is called deficit. This is more common in chronic phases of schizophrenia in which the patient has a motivation there is social withdrawal, there is anhedonia, anhedonia is incapacity to obtain pleasure from normally pleasurable things. There is flattened effect, there is cognitive disturbances, poor grooming and poor speech content. So this is opposite, this is negative symptoms. There is a third category described in schizophrenia sometimes and is called as disorganization or disordered social adjustment. In disorganization, it is mainly thought disorder, there is bizarre behavior and impaired attention and or there is cognitive dysfunction. So disorganization or disordered social adjustment, a third variant in the symptoms of schizophrenia. Now we move on to discuss the phases in schizophrenia. The first one is called risk phase. This includes the various knowing of various genetic factors, intrauterine infection which we already discussed the obstetric risks, although the other risks may occur later in life, especially things like cannabis abuse. The second stage is prodromal stage, 
in which there is social isolation, reduced school or work performance and odd thinking. The third phase is psychotic phase. This is the real phase in schizophrenia in which there is loss of reality. There is delusions and hallucinations. And the next one is chronic disability phase in which there is prominent negative symptoms. I would like to advise you remember these stages for example let's have a look at these stages and someone can ask you prominent negative symptoms is a characteristic of which phases of schizophrenia and you have so many options here so this is an issue for multiple choice question you need to remember this prominent negative symptoms is the chronic disability phase it doesn't happen early okay the next one is called residual phases these are the periods between the various psychotic episodes. We move on to understand what is thought disorder. In the beginning I said the thought disorder may be at the form of the thought, content of the thought and the process of the thought. It's interesting to know this. Form of thought is in problem. So what happens is number one is echolalia is the patient is more interested in sounds as compared to the words. For example, if you ask the patient what is your age or how old are you then the patient might say I'm bigger than a doll but smaller than a wall. Are you getting it? The patient is not mentioning the age. The patient is more interested in the doll and wall. Is not interested in the words. Sounds are more interesting for the patient. So that's called echolalia. Loose associations is the next one. Is shifting of ideas. From one idea to another, patient goes and shifting. That's called loose associations. Next one is neologism. Neo is new. Neologism is invention of new words. You might hear certain words from this particular patient which you may not find anywhere in the dictionary. This word does not exist. The patient may have his own new words. I might remind you, you know, when you start speaking with a child who just learned to speak, the child invents his own words. So I think you would remember by this way, there's new word invention, that's neologism. Then there's perseveration, there's repetition of the same words again and again. Next issue is tangentiality, is the person starts from one particular chapter, one particular topic issue and goes away and away from the original topic. That's called being tangent or tangentiality. The next one is thought blocking, there is abrupt halt when the patient is speaking and the lips keep on moving only the lips keep on moving but there's no sound there's no word this is called the thought block the next one is word salad there's unrelated words coming together and this combination of unrelated words so all these are examples of the form of thought how the thought is formed in the form of words the next one is thought content and the example of thought content disorder is the ideas of reference Anything happens in this world, the patient feels it is being referred to him. For example, if there is rain starting, the patient might say that the rain has started because it is going to wipe away my house. Everything is related to him. There is a reference. So it's called idea of reference. So that's thought content. The next one is thought process in problem. How is it in problem? For example, there is a phenomenon called loss of ego boundaries. For example, the patient might say, Doctor, look at this. You and me are joined. We are joined. The person is not able to process the thought properly. So there is loss of ego boundaries. The person doesn't understand we are two different individuals and we cannot be joined. And the patient says we are joined. Next, the abstraction is lost. Means the object properties are not identified. For example, you ask the patient, Who brought you here? The patient's answer is, the wind, the wind brought me here. Look at this. The patient doesn't understand the abstraction, doesn't understand the object property that wind cannot bring you here. Next, the patient may have magical thinking, acts of undoing and the patient may have superstitious behavior because the thought process is in problem. So I hope you understood these are various thought disorders where the form of thought, content of thought or the process of thought may be in problem. Next we come to the types of schizophrenia and what I have done on this table is the left column is telling you the type of schizophrenia and the right column is mentioning some important salient features about this type. 
You need to remember this because this is an important issue for your multiple choice question. You need to differentiate which type of which characteristic is more commonly seen in which type of schizophrenia. The first one is undifferentiated and this is the most common. It's undifferentiated because it contains characters of many types which we are discussing further. Okay. The next one is paranoid schizophrenia in which there is delusions of persecution. The, it, this, has, this has got late age onset and these patients in general have got better functioning. There is delusion of persecution. It means that whenever you feel that someone is spying on me, someone is trying to kill me, someone is planning to beat me, these are called delusions of persecution. This is common in paranoid schizophrenia. This type of schizophrenia has got a comparatively late age onset and the general functioning in these patients is comparatively better. The next type is called residual schizophrenia. In this, there are more negative symptoms and the positive symptoms are very mild. The patient doesn't have any current hallucinations or delusions. And there is history of at least one episode, one psychotic episode in the past. And because there are more negative symptoms, there is flat effect, there is blunted effect. This is called residual schizophrenia. Next one is disorganized or hebephrenic schizophrenia in which the patient has incoherent speech. There is facial grimacing seen. There is very poor grooming. These patients cannot dress themselves properly. They are not bothered about it. There is loss of reality. Naturally, there is very poor grooming and there are acts of silliness. This disorganized schizophrenia has got comparatively earlier age onset that is less than 25 years and the patient typically has got a habit of looking, in, looking into the mirror repeatedly which is called mirror gazing. The last one is catatonic type of schizophrenia which is comparatively rare in which also there is incoherent speech or muteness, there is stupor or agitation, there is blank face and the patient obtains bizarre postures and maintains typical odd postures for a pretty long period of time. If you have seen someone standing by the side of the road in a particular posture for 5 hours, 6 hours, maybe this is catatonic type of schizophrenia which is comparatively rare. So just to revise this once again, in paranoid there is delusions of persecution, in residual there are more negative symptoms and there is flat effect, in disorganized there is very poor grooming, in catatonic there is bizarre postures. And on the top, I have written is undifferentiated, which is most common. You get many mixed characters of all the types. Then you call it undifferentiated type of schizophrenia. So I advise you do this well. And as I highlighted the salient feature, this is going to be an issue of your multiple choice question. Next, we move on to prognosis. Onset of schizophrenia is usually in the young adulthood. It leads to lifelong impairment and repeated episodes. There is chronic debilitating downhill course over years and there is rapid deterioration of the mental function and behavior. All this is a sad story. Slowly there is a downward drift across the socio-economic scale because this patient cannot function properly, cannot have an occupation, cannot have a job. Suicide is common in schizophrenic patients. It's almost 50% and 10% of these patients may become successful. The post-psychotic depression might be seen in some patients and there may be command hallucinations to harm itself, to harm himself or herself, may be seen as command hallucinations. When do you get better prognosis in schizophrenia? Schizophrenic patients have a better prognosis if the onset of schizophrenia is comparatively at late age. In married individuals and in those having good social relationships, then in females, the prognosis is better. If the patient has good employment history, prognosis is definitely better. And more positive symptoms, more mood symptoms and few relapses. These are some important features when the patient is likely to have a better prognosis. Let's go on to discuss briefly the management, the drug treatment of schizophrenia. The drugs used against psychosis or schizophrenia are called anti-psychotic drugs. And if you look at the table, it is showing you traditional or older agents and on the right side, the last column is the newer agents. Traditional or older agents may be low potency or high potency agents. Have a look at the slide. The low potency agents 
have got less extrapyramidal symptoms as their adverse effects and the anticholinergic adverse effects are more whereas the high potency agents have got more extrapyramidal symptoms and less anticholinergic adverse effects so the better way to remember is dopamine is the keyword when the drug has got anti-dopaminergic effect, dopaminergic blocking effect with a very high potency, extrapyramidal symptoms are naturally going to be more. So I said high potency agents, more extrapyramidal symptoms, low potency agents, less extrapyramidal symptoms. Low potency agents are chlorpromazine, thioridazine and thiotixin and the high potency agents are haloperidol, penfluoridol, flufinazine, trifluopirazine, pimozide and perfinazine. I am sure you are looking at the slide. We go to the last column now. Have a look at the slide. And all these names are going to be extremely important for you. So please have a look at the slide. The low potency agents, the newer agents. Let's have a look at the names. Clozapine, Olanzapine, Quetiapine, Aripiprazole, Risperidone, Ziprasidone and Taliperidone. Clozapine, Olanzapine and Quetiapine, I have placed them together because all of them they end with PIN. In between there is Aripiprazole and last three are ending with DON, D-O-N-E, that's Risperidone, Ziprasidone and Paliperidone. Let's go to the next slide and have a look at the differences. The next slide is showing you important differences between the traditional versus the atypical or newer antipsychotic agents. As you see here, the traditional antipsychotic agents mainly act on DA receptors, that's dopaminergic receptors, whereas the atypical ones act on the DA as well as the 5-HT receptors. Traditional ones, amongst the DA receptors, they mainly act on the D2 receptors, whereas the atypical ones, they do act on the D2 receptors, but very predominant action on D4 receptors as well as the 5-HT receptors. Traditional antipsychotics treat mostly the positive symptoms, Whereas the atypical ones treat positive as well as negative symptoms. That's very important. Traditional antipsychotic agents obviously have more adverse effects and the atypical agents have got less adverse effect. And the traditional ones are less useful if there is a refractory or resistant case of disease. Whereas the atypical ones are also useful in the refractory cases. Let's have a look at the newer antipsychotics because these are the ones which are most commonly used now and on the first row itself I am telling you what is less, what adverse effects are less. Have a look at it. Extrapyramidal symptoms, hyperplatinemia is less, postural hypotension is less because there is less alpha blocking property, anticholinergic adverse effects are comparatively less, antihistaminic effects leading to sedation, appetite and weight gain as well as precipitation of seizures. All these adverse effects are comparatively less. We are always comparing them with the older or traditional antipsychotic agents. Now let's go to important salient features of each of these drugs. Number one, clozapine. This produces a granulocytosis as one of the important adverse effects and you need to monitor the blood counts of the patient. Clozapine also is known to produce seizures, is known to lower the seizure threshold. It can precipitate diabetes and hypertension. But the speciality of clozapine, the great thing about clozapine that it is least likely to produce tardive dyskinesia and extrapyramidal symptom which happens in the long term use of antipsychotic drugs. This is least likely to happen with clozapine. If your patient is on an antipsychotic agent other than clozapine for years and gets tardive dyskinesia, the correct way, the appropriate way is to stop the older antipsychotic agent and shift the patient to clozapine because clozapine is least likely to precipitate tardive dyskinesia. The next one is ziprasidone is known to prolong QT intervals and this can lead to cardiac arrhythmia but ziprasidone is important because it produces least weight gain. The weight gain property increased appetite and the weight gain that's histaminergic blockage is least seen with ziprasidone. We move on to the next drug that is aripiprazole is an extremely important agent of the day it's got more action on the D4 receptors and is typically called DA5HT stabilizer. It stabilizes the dopamine and 5HT levels. This has got a novel mechanism. It blocks the D2 receptors. It also acts on the 5HT1A receptors at which it is a partial agonist and it is an antagonist 
at 5 ht 2 a receptor so that's the novel mechanism of action Aripiprazole has got a long half-life of three days and all the adverse effects whatever we discussed with the older antipsychotic agents and as we mentioned on the first row are less with aripiprazole. The next agent is quetiapin. Quetiapin is known to produce sedation, is known to precipitate seizures and a very typical adverse effect seen with quetiapin is cataract. The last one on this slide is zipras is risperidon, sorry risperidon it's got extra pyramidal symptoms, precipitation, if it is low, used in a higher dose, that's more than 6 mg per day. It can precipitate stroke in the elderly, it's known to precipitate hyperprolactinemia and risperidone has got less anticholinergic effect. This was the drug once upon a time extremely popular and supposed to be the safest antipsychotic agents and nowadays we also have the additional agents to be used as aripiprazole and ciprasidone which have got still better adverse effect profile. We move on to the next slide to deal with non-compliance of the patient. You can't expect schizophrenic patient who has lost ground reality, who has got sometimes positive symptoms, sometimes negative symptoms to take the medication regularly, which becomes a very severe issue. Long acting injectable depo preparations are available in the form of haloperidol and flufenazine as decanoid salt. You also have risperidone microspheres and all these can be injected deep intramuscularly which have got a long action of 3 weeks. In addition to this, supportive therapy, family therapy and group psychotherapy is going to be useful in patients with schizophrenia. We now come to the differential diagnosis of schizophrenia. The patient looks like schizophrenia but might be something else. We need to differentiate from other conditions. The first differential diagnosis is psychotic disorder due to medical condition. Please learn to omit this in the first place. And very important differentiating point is in schizophrenia you get hallucinations which are mostly auditory hallucinations. Whereas in psychotic disorder due to medical condition you get visual hallucinations. Then there will be also an acute medical illness known and there is no delirium or dementia. Next the brief psychotic disorder. The patient looks like having psychosis, looks like having schizophrenia, but please remember the characteristic. We said all those symptoms should be continued for at least six months. Then you call it schizophrenia. What is brief psychotic disorder? Similar symptoms may be seen, but they are happening over a period of one day to one month. So you don't label it as schizophrenia. There are some precipitating psychosocial factors involved. So you call it brief psychotic disorder less than one month. The next one is schizophreniform disorder. Schizophreniform is looking like schizophrenia but is not schizophrenia because the symptoms are there for less than six months. So one month to six months plus there is presence of some precipitating factors then you call it schizophreniform disorder. Once again to repeat brief psychotic disorder up to one month and from one month to six months call it schizophreniform disorder. The next one is schizoaffective disorder. I discussed in the beginning affective is concerned with mood. So this patient has got mood symptoms plus the patient has got the psychotic symptoms. That's the symptoms of schizophrenia. So there is mood symptoms during the psychotic and residual phase plus there is psychosis. If this happens for at least two weeks and there's chronic social and occupational functioning impaired, then you call it a schizoaffective disorder. Please remember the word affective. This is telling you that along with psychotic symptoms, the patient also suffers from mood symptoms and this is continued for at least two weeks. Then you call it schizoaffective disorder. We go to the next slide. The next slide is delusional disorder and shared delusional disorder. If you remember the opening of this particular presentation, we said psychotic disorders, schizophrenia and delusional disorder. So this is that delusional disorder. What is the problem with this patient? This patient has fixed delusions at least one month and please remember there is no other thought disorder. There is totally normal social functioning. Whatever is the impairment of his functioning is happening due to that fixed delusion and delusion and delusion is the only issue and that is leading to all the symptoms. If this happens for at least one month, then you call it delusional disorder. 
The next one is manic phase of bipolar disorder, which has got extremely rapid course. So this is different from schizophrenia. It's a manic phase. So the patient may have psychotic symptoms. But in addition to this, patient has got some typical features of mania. That's elation. That's high mood, hyperreactivity. Then there is sociability, rapid speech. There are delusions of grandeur. Typically, the patient feels, I am great, I am someone great. That's the delusion of grandeur. And there is no social impairment in between the episodes. That's important to remember. So, that's mania. That's manic phase of bipolar disorder. This is not schizophrenia. Lastly, you have schizoid personality disorder, schizotypal personality disorder, and borderline personality disorders. These are three personality disorders and they don't show the typical features of schizophrenia for more than six months and you need to differentiate them from schizophrenia. So the differential diagnosis issue will be extremely important and something which is going to confuse you mainly is the psychotic episode due to some medical condition in which there are visual hallucinations. Then there is brief psychotic episode which should be there for less than one month and the next one is schizophrenia form disorder which is up to six months. So the duration is going to differentiate the brief psychotic episode as well as the schizophrenia form episode. Whereas the medical condition will be differentiated typically by visual hallucinations and a definite association with an acute medical illness. I hope this module of schizophrenia has been useful to you, will be useful to you to know the diagnosis, to know the prognosis, to know the various types of schizophrenia as well as the antipsychotic drug treatment. I wish you good luck, all the best, do this thoroughly and you will succeed on your exam. Best of luck.